All right, welcome guys. Today's video, we came over here to the island of Ko Si Chang. Now, don't confuse that with the island of Ko Chang. They're completely different animals. Uh, Ko Si Chang is really close to Bangkok. It's a dry, kind of a Mediterranean type island. Uh, Ko Chang is quite a bit further away and has some of the most rainfall that you get in Thailand. Anyway, we're gonna explore the, uh, the little island of Ko Si Chang and see what we see. So let me show you around. thing I was drawn to right off the pier is this big old boat. So for some reason the customs has a boat sitting here and they're painting it up and uh, I don't know it's just right here in the harbor. And then it has a lighthouse which is one of the coolest looking lighthouses I've seen. It has like a Chinese style pagoda on the top. And Ko Si Chang is right here in the middle of some important shipping lanes. So you see all kinds of big boats and barges and everything off uh, off the coastline and then right here is the main pier where you can come in and you can rent a motorcycle and uh, explore the island and uh, most of it yeah a lot of fishing boats and then up on the hill is a Buddha footprint we'll check that out and then there's a Chinese temple that I want to go see so let's see this uh, this looks pretty fun okay so this is on the back side of the island away from the main port at just a little tiny beach and it's kind of out here by itself it's pretty cool the whole coastline of this uh, this island is kind of these gray rocks and the whole inside of the island to the interior part of the island is all these gray rocks also and this is a really dry island there's not much vegetation on the inside Tampeng Beach. And it's low tide right now, so the water is way out. But normally the normal tide marks right up there. So it uh, has a little bit of beach, not a whole lot. It's pretty small. And there's a Tampeng resort that's right there in the trees. And then they have uh, the umbrellas and you can get food and everything. And then at this end of the beach is uh, more of the rocks. So there's not a whole lot to do here. You can, uh, you can get on uh, the little paddle boats or uh, the tubes and do some stuff but it's mainly just to come and relax up underneath uh, the umbrellas and eat some food and look out at the ocean you can see the view has a few of the boats it's all right it's still on a on a beach in the tropics and the sand that isn't quite that rocky is a nice white sand but it has quite a bit to the rock quite a bit of rock on this beach so over here is the viewpoint into the interior of the island. It looks like they've been trying to get a little building built here on the viewpoint, but it's not completed yet. And then uh, this is, I guess, where they want people to start coming over to see the sunset. And then got some fishermen down here, three poles. All right, so I was riding along and I see these guys fixing up this old boat here. So I stopped and talked to the, uh, the guys that are doing the construction work and they've been explaining kind of what's going on. So they're, uh, they're taking the old ribs out of the ship and they're having to fix all this up. So this is just an old fishing boat that's kind of rotting away. And they add these new beams in, these right here. So they're just basically putting this right onto the top of the one that's already in there if they can. And after they repair this up, he said that this wood here will be good for about 40 years. And then they put the, uh, the outside of the boat on. And you can see in here how the, the ribs are just falling apart. I thought this was really, really interesting. He's talking about the cost of the wood. And uh, so the, the wood they get, they, they actually can cut it right here off the island. And then they, uh, they can cut it into the boards and they can put it into the boat. But these are some of the boards they use. And they try to recycle as much wood as they can just for the cost. So these orange boards right here are about $30 each. And they said that if they can, they use all of those. They're 960 baht. And then you see some of the other wood that they cut from the trees here on the island. 
And then the main wood that they use, the really important wood is these right here. And these are about $69 or so, 66 to $69 each. So if they can, they use the existing wood because this is most of the budget for fixing this up. And you can see how much of the wood they've had to replace. And then they'll replace these boards with the, uh, the cheaper wood. And they just have it set up. They have a little, uh, like a little tent thing to keep them out of the sun. And then they go to work. This part of the island life. And this is the main carpenter guy here. Oh, sorry, cop. <laughs> and then uh, the cabin and all underneath it there. So they got quite a big job and then they bolt, uh, they just put a big anchor bolt right there between the existing wood and the new piece that they're putting in. You can see how they have the whole back end of this whole boat tore apart. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I really enjoy seeing stuff like this. Anyway, that's a, a quick little stop. Just uh, saw this and thought it would be interesting. Let's keep looking around the island. Come in. So I wanted to come up here and check it out. And there's a couple more other Buddhas up in the trees. But this is just kind of a little country temple. You got the dogs barking and uh, the monks doing their thing and a few other things. But it's kind of nice. You can see it uh, from quite a ways away. It kind of dominates the the surroundings. And they call this the Yellow Buddha for obvious reasons. And you can see down into the town and you can see on the horizon there all of the boats. Just thousands of them it seems like. But it is the main shipping line between the ocean and Bangkok, going right by the island. Okay, and then that part of this temple supposedly has this little cave here, and there's something down in there, so let's go take a look. It's got quite a little musty smell. Doesn't look like it's too exciting, but something to look at. Some little rickety steps. Some tree branches growing down from up above. That's kind of cool looking. And all the way down at the bottom of the cave has a little shrine down below and it looks like uh, maybe like their cistern for some water for the temple. And then looking back up, it's kind of interesting. I like the way the trees have grown up out of the cave and then the tree branches or tree roots, I'm sorry, that are just growing on the wall. And then they have like a little building there that has some stuff, it looks like monk robes and all that inside of it, but I don't know what it's about. All right, okay, so it, I didn't quite notice there was another little part of the stairs. So at the very bottom of the cave, here's this reclining Buddha. And this is like a little, little tank here that I think they can do it with like the holy water you see on some of the temples. And then there's a little bit more stuff down here on the bottom. And it looks like uh, one of the marker stones and they put some gold leaf on it. And that guy down here, he's doing some drawing about some stuff here. All right, let's go back up to the top. All right, so climbed up to the top here and here's these two standing Buddha images. And then a little temple dog here hanging out. And you can see the back of the yellow Buddha. All right, so here at the temple, they also have a statue of King Rama V. He was really important on this uh, island. He built a palace and would come here to spend his summers to relax and fish and stuff like that. And then his one of his sons is right here on the right. So they have that, and then they have some of the, like the regular stuff you see around the temples, kind of around the little building that they have his uh, statue in. And then over here, you can buy like amulets and all of the stuff to do your praying. Now, one of the little landmarks is this white little building here. And what it was done, it was built by Rama V for his son, so his son could rest while they were out here uh, on the island. It gets really hot during the day, so a little bit of shade, so that's what this is about. Nothing really exciting, but it's a little bit of their history. It's right here, we're at the, uh, the viewpoint, and you can see it's a place for rest, to sea view and fishing. And this talks a little bit about what happened here, is that this is a viewpoint that they built. Uh, King Shulalongkorn ordered a road to be built between the two sides of the island, between the two passes. And uh, this is the viewpoint where you could sit and you can uh, watch people fish and stuff like that. He was an adamant fisherman, so he liked 
to uh, to do that. This is the Vashavut Bridge. It's right over here next to the viewpoint. As you can see, this whole island is pretty rocky like this. There's not a lot of really dense vegetation. They have some of the magnolia trees, I believe. That's what they are, and they're bloomed out. And that's a little bit thicker than most of the inside of the island right there. But most of it is just soil like this, like rocks. And down here is the, like a little stony beach. And you can see in the water just the amount of trash. It's really a shame. This island has quite a bit of trash on it. And the sea lanes have so much of this uh, plastic bottles and everything also. And it kind of spoils a really nice place. But you know, I just saw like at the temple, the monks just threw their uh, plastic bottles right out into the jungle right there by the, by the temple and it was just littered. So it's one of those things that's unfortunate, but uh, that's what they do. That's pretty nice, this white bridge. And then you can see the viewpoint up there. And then the coastline of the island. There's a guy down here going through the, the rubbish that washes up on the beach looking for uh, plastic bottles and stuff. And there's plenty of trash to be found. As you can see all out in the water here. All right, so here we are at Kaupo Kaoyai Shrine. It's a pretty big Chinese temple that's up here on the hill. So let's look around inside. Okay, here's the shrine, everybody's over here making some merit. We got the money tree, the joe sticks, the candles, the normal stuff. Got a little shrine over here also. I'm not sure what the old man's doing. He's telling him to how to pray and stuff. So it looks like uh, they have a cable car that can pull you up there, but I don't know if it's an operation or not. But we'll take the stairs. Get the dragon. Pretty cool looking. All right, so let's go up there and see what's at the top. About three quarters of the way up, they have this little shrine here. And then they have this little thing and the Chinese people let off the firecrackers for Chinese New Year and stuff like that. All right, so at the top of the hill, here's the, uh, the Chinese Buddha. And they got the Goddess of Mercy and all the, the normal stuff. And it sounds like they do have that little cable car coming up here running now. They started up a big diesel engine so people can uh, bring that up. But it's about 150 stairs or so. Enough to get you sweating, but not too, not too difficult. And they have some uh, Buddha statues. Place to buy uh, your stuff and make donations for the temple. And they have a little cave. They wrote up on the roof, up on the top of the rocks. So low ceiling. Oh, this is kind of nice. So they've made a Buddha out of uh, the rock. So it's up over on the side. And the people that have hung the little piece of ribbon from the top of the cave. They write a little message and want a blessing. So there's that. Another little Buddha thing. Okay. Well, if this means something to him, I don't know. I don't know anything more about it. Let's go up to the last part up top. This is the last little part up here, way at the top. So they've been letting off fireworks. You can see all the debris. And then they have like a totem. And uh, that's about it up here. Just have a nice view of the harbor and the piers and the boats 
off in the horizon. All right, so here's the uh, little tram operator guy. They got an old diesel engine over there. And pulling some people up. All right, so here is the stairs. This goes all the way up to the top of the mountain where the Buddha footprint is up on the top. And I guess it's 505 stairs from here up. And right here at the bottom is another little cave with the Chinese style Buddha. It's pretty nice. Yeah, I did notice there was a little part of a cave back here. Low overhead. Looks like another little Buddha you can come and pray to. All right, so on this island, they have some kind of cool looking tutus. It's like an extended motorcycle, you can see here. And then they put some different motors in it. They got like a little four cylinder motor that they put in there. And uh, this is the tuk-tuk and you can ride it. You can rent these out for like 300 baht and they'll take you to all the major parts on the island. Okay, so we got some food here. We got the uh, salted egg stuff with the shrimp and some rice. And then the old favorite is some uh, fried rice with the chicken. So we're gonna eat this up and do something different. Right here on top of one of the hills, I have this little white pagoda. And what's special about it is this was built by King Chulalong Korn. I believe is Rama five. You can see the little stone uh, marker. But uh, he built this here. They have a uh, Buddha footprint. So this is something that's really sacred for the Thais. They can come up here and they can make some merit around the Buddha footprint. And then they have this little stone here. Now there's supposed to be a flagpole that King Chulalong Korn put up here that was supposed to be able to help the, uh, the sailors. They could see it in the... Uh, out here in the channel. So this is the main part of Kosi Chang. And it has a couple little piers there and it has kind of the coolest lighthouse I've ever seen. The lighthouse has a little Chinese pagoda built up on top of it, which is kind of different. And then you can see in the trees, they have some more uh, chetties and then they have a, a Buddha over there. That's the interior of the island, and then on the back side over here, opposite, that's where the one and only beach on the island is at. Now there's a couple signs that say some other beaches, but all they are is just a place where the rocks are smaller than, uh, than normal, but they're not real true beaches. And they have the, uh, the bell in this little jetty. And then the last little bit up here on top of this hill, they have this uh, little Buddha statue. Kind of a cool view with the sun right behind and then they have some speakers playing this uh, the chanting the whole time and then you can see this more of the view right over there's a small little island and the ferry stops there but i'm not sure uh, if there's any hotels on it or if it's just workers that are on that island and then those buildings on the horizon over there that's sea racha that's where the ferry comes from the main island or the main part of thailand and then there's just boats all out in the channel. This is a main shipping lane between Bangkok and the sea. And then up here on the top of the hill are these little peach colored flowers that are pretty nice. So they have a stairwell that looks like it may go all the way down to town. So this is quite high. It would be a little bit of work to get all the way up here. And then you can see some more of the view so many boats and you can see them like the big boats unloading their uh, cargo onto these smaller barges and here's that rock thing here with the gold on the top not sure what it's for but they've came and uh, stacked rocks up all around it you see they've done uh, all around the base they've just stacked rocks Kind of a cool little white building here that's where the buddha footprints at and then there is a 
set of stairs that goes up into the jungle over there. I don't know if that goes all the way up to the top of the peak. This actually looks pretty cool here, right through the uh, trees. And you can see on the steps, the trees that are growing in the middle of the, the walkway. All right, guys. Wow, that was a bit of a climb. Anyway, I'm up at the top of this little mountain and uh, I don't really know what's up here. They have a big pile of rocks and then you're up in all of the trees. So let's take a look really quick at what all's up here and then we'll go back so down. They have this, uh, this marker here. I'm not sure if this is where they built the flagpole or not. There's a sign down below that says something about a flagpole that was 28 Wa high. And so, Anyway, one wah is two meters. Or it was 14 wah, so it would be 28 meters tall. Then it has this uh, trail that goes out into the out into the jungle. Don't know if there's much to see. Okay, so back in the trees, they have this uh, circular stone thing built. Should be able to see a nice view of the city from up here. Okay, so here we are. Here's this flagpole that I was looking for. So this flagpole was put up by King Chulalongkorn or Rama V. And it was a signal marker for the boats in the, in the channels so they could see it. The view is definitely very, very nice up here. So you can see the sun will be setting soon. It's quite breezy, but still a nice. And that looks over into the town. All right guys, so that finishes up our little tour of Koh si Chang Island. We're over here at the pier at Ga Loi. That's the name of this pier. And there's a little Chinese temple. And this is where you catch the ferry to go over to the island of Koh si Chang. There's uh, like the uh, Goddess of Mercy behind me and a couple other little shrines all around. That's a Chinese style temple. Anyway, the ferry from here is 50 baht, takes you about 40 minutes. And it's, uh, it's not a problem, pretty easy to do. So anyway, guys, hopefully you liked that video. Koh si Chang is nice. I uh, have never been there before. There's not a lot to do if you're a beach goer. The beach is pretty small, pretty rocky, not that nice. But the rest of the island is pretty cool. It has the, uh, the old summer palace that we saw, has the Chinese temple, the yellow Buddha, and some of the other things. So it's definitely worth a look. If you have a couple days, go and spend. If, it's, uh, if you're short for time, I would not recommend going there. It's just not a beach island it's just an island to go and uh, look around and it's mainly for the ties to go and spend the weekend and get out of the city but it's it's still nice i enjoyed it i really like the island i just didn't really care for the amount of trash that you see around and uh, it's just it's really really hot especially this time of year so uh, like i said uh, definitely uh, worth a look if you have time but don't make a special trip there so if you like my video make sure you click like and uh, subscribe if you're not already subscribed share it with your friends and if you want to let if you want to know something or if uh if you have a comment leave it down below if you want me to go see something different tell me also and i'll do my best to go make a video of it and uh, that's kind of what i do i like to go and see new things so as always guys remember life is a journey so enjoy it